Today we are going to learn how to use the Eraser tool in Inkscape. For those of you coming from Illustrator, we can get the same effect like the Knife tool by using either the Eraser tool of Inkscape or by using a series of available Boolean path effects. I have drawn three shapes here for this tutorial. I have links to the tutorials showing how to draw these shapes and how to use path effects in the description section below. The eraser tool can be found in the box here on the left. You can access it by left clicking here or by using the keyboard shortcut Shift E. When you access it, you're going to have a tool control bar up here. You can see two modes up here. The Torch mode removes objects from a drawing, while the Cut Out mode removes parts of objects. With the mode set to Delete Objects, touched by the eraser, you can click on the canvas and drag to touch objects to have them deleted. I am going to drag on to touch these blue and orange circles and they are going to be deleted. This tool comes in handy if you have a composite object and you wish to delete parts of it and it will be difficult selecting each one at a time. However, you will not be routinely using this way to delete. Remember, you can always delete in Inkscape by selecting an object and hitting delete or the backspace key on your keyboard. I will take Ctrl Z to have our circles back ready for the next demonstrations. The next mode is cut out from objects. When you choose this, you will notice this slider you can use to change the width of the eraser pen. When regular shapes are crossed using the eraser pen under this mode, they are first converted to paths. This mode does not work on bitmap images or directly on grouped objects. If you select each of the objects and look here below, you will notice we have circles and a triangle. Notice later when we apply the cut effect that the objects would be converted to paths. Next, use the node tool and click on each object and see that they are not filled with nodes. Later, when we apply the cut effect, we will do the same to notice the new objects will contain many nodes added to them where the cut went through. Back to the tool control bar. Increasing the width here will increase the width of the cut. Let us set the width to say 5 and left click and drag on this blue circle to see the size of the cut. Next, let us bump up the width to say 15 and left click and drag on the blue circle to notice the size has increased. The mass option allows the cut path to be straight or more regular. Taking the value up is going to make the cut path to be more straight or regular, but will also make the movement of the cursor slow. Let us set the mass to zero and try cutting into this orange circle on the right. You see the cut is not so smooth. Let us add the mass up to 15 and cut. And now you see the cut is a little bit more smooth. Lastly, let us add the mass up to 100. And we are going to try here to pull and notice that it's going to be pretty much slow. So here you will pull the mouse and it is going to take a while to respond. Just keep on pulling. It is going to be very slow but will lead to a very regular cut. This can be very useful when trying to carefully cut out part of a shape to yield a new desired shape. Whichever value of the mass you want to use is left to you. Just try a compromise that is not going to make it very slow, but will allow you to have a regular cut. This looks good so far, but you may wish to ask the question, what are the things I should be careful about when using this tool? First, click on each of the objects to select 
Then hit N on your keyboard to access the notes. Now you will notice that by cutting, you have added many new paths that could use up a lot of memory. To reduce the number of nodes and consequently the memory resources, you can select the object and choose Path, Simplify, or use a keyboard shortcut Ctrl L. Secondly, if we click on this object, we will notice it is still one whole object. To demonstrate, let us take this blue circle with cuts and hover over the yellow triangle to notice it is still a single object with transparent portions. What if we wanted to cut and pull apart the parts we see? You will select the object and go to Path, Break Apart, or use the keyboard shortcut shift Control k this will allow you to pull the parts and transform or position them as you wish. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, do not forget to like it and subscribe if you've not yet done so. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.